All right, welcome back to the Name Redacted Podcast, America's most beloved podcast, the most downloaded Red Sox podcast on the internet. Uh, we are coming off. Oh, happy flight. Happy flight, baby. The Red Sox have swept the Oakland A's three games in their house. Uh, a lot, and I, I just posted my State of the Nation video. Um, a lot of things have come out of this sweep. Number one, the Red Sox are back to 500. They have a 500 record. Uh, this team has scratched and clawed and fought their way back to 500. And they are there. Uh, this also means that if you listen to Baseball is Dead, I had a wager with my longtime co-host Dallas Braden that if the Red Sox were to sweep the Oakland A's, that when the Oakland A's come to town next week, that he has to come to my apartment and clean the entire apartment in a maid outfit. That's happening. That content is coming to you. So be sure to uh, like and subscribe on all channels for that content. Uh, next, the Red Sox, because of this victory, are in a playoff spot. And, and I wanted to start here. Because Tyler brought it up before we hit record. Yankee fans were all over me. This, but first of all, mind your fucking business. Sobbing. They're sobbing. Mind your fucking business, dude. What are you? So I, I wake up this morning and I didn't, even, I didn't even realize this. Like this was not something that I was keeping an eye on. Because, I mean, it's June. It's, it's, the, it's the first week of June. So hand up, scouts honor. I was not even looking at the wild card standings. Someone happened to like tweet them and I saw it on my timeline. And I was like, wait, what? The Red Sox are a half game out of a fucking wild card spot? I didn't even realize until this morning. So then I screenshot the wild card standings and I tweet them out and I just say, good morning. That's all I did. I tweeted out the wild card standings showing the Red Sox were a half game out of a playoff spot. And I said, good morning. That's it. I consider that quite noble. You're letting other people, you know, you didn't know and you follow baseball no. as closely as anyone. So to put that out there just as a little bit of a refresher for some people. Sure. And I, and I think it's important covering the sport, especially the Red Sox, to let unbiased. fans know, unbiased, hey, if the Angels lose today and the Red Sox win today, you're in a playoff spot. That's important information. And I'm letting you know at the risk of my credibility that I didn't realize that when I woke up this morning. I didn't. And so I tweeted I'll, it out. And I'll throw on top of it, today's actually a, a special point in the season for the Red Sox. You're officially one third of the way through the year. One third of the way. That's a milestone. Pretty big. You're one third of the way through the season and you're at the 500 mark. And I know that it's been a battle to, to get back to the 500 mark. The battle's not over. It's not even close to being over. This is where you start. Now you go. Now you go. You don't fight to get here. You kind of, you mean, you do have to fight to get to this point, sure. But now that you're here, now it's time to hit the gas. Now you go balls to the wall, um, pedal to the metal when you have, and we'll get to this in the stop and shop look ahead. Uh, now you're playing a team that has lost 11 straight games, coming off a series sweep of the Oakland A's who are not very good. Okay, fine, whatever. But when I woke up this morning, the Angels were a playoff team. So let's not underestimate the opponent. They may have lost 11 straight games, but now we go. Uh, so here's the thing <clears throat> about these, these Yankee fans. Uh, I was trying to educate any Red Sox fans that may not have noticed that the Red Sox were half game out of a playoff spot at the time. Um, but all the replies were from Yankee fans, wild card shaming us. It was insane. The, the amount of Yankee fans that were saying, like, oh, that's pathetic. The wild card, really? Yes, the Yankees have the best record in baseball. They're probably going to win the division this year. We'll see. The Toronto Blue Jays are playing good baseball. There's still two-thirds of the season left for maybe the Rays or maybe even the Red Sox to get involved. I don't know. I'm just, you know, things happen. Teams do lose 11 straight. Shit does happen. Anything is possible. Anything's possible. You have, you have potential playoff teams losing 11 straight games. So that shit does happen. <clears throat> Anyways. These Yankee fans are trying to wildcard shame us when, lo and behold, 
the Yankees have played in five of the last seven wild card games. If they if they win the division, they've won one division title in the last ten years. One. It, it's unfortunate. It seems like. You know, you think when that was probably a lot of these fans, all they can really remember. You know, it's not even to be mean, but this is all they really have to look at is That's these it. wild card appearances. And for them to just so quickly look down on those, at, you know, congrats, you've had a great start to the season. But were they not the ones who were crying last year when the Red Sox played well, you know, the first three months of the season? And, you know, I don't think people were going crazy or jumping off balconies or anything, but they were the first ones to sit there and say, you know, there's a lot of baseball season left. And mm-hmm. they echoed that down the stretch last year. Yeah. What? Well, where are you now? Yeah. The and, energy's and, changed. And, and they're shaming the fact that it's that last wild card spot when the Yankees got into the playoffs last year with the last wild card spot. What are we talking about here? That's, that's the answer, though, Jared. It, it, w- I hate to... And, you know, my mind gets foggy sometimes with mm-hmm. a lot of this. We watch a lot of Red Sox baseball. A lot of ball. I, I've seen people say... I didn't I don't I can't speak for myself that something happened in that wild card game. I remember watching it. Do um, you? Yeah. I w- the thing is I was in New Jersey though, so like it was like ah we were at like the gambling cave and you know a lot of people were yelling, we got mics on, cameras on, as a whole thing. Pretty sure the Red Sox won that game though. Yeah, I I remember something about Garrett Cole shit in his pants and Xander that Bogarts. One. Yeah. Uh, that yeah, Xander Bogarts had a home run. Uh, I believe Kyle from Waltham mm. hit a home run as well. Uh, I'm trying to think what else happened. I know the Red Sox won though; they won the game. I remember a pretty ridiculous relay involving mm-hmm. Xander Bogarts. Yeah, as well. yeah, the Red Sox actually were wearing T-shirts that had like a X's and O's football type graphic of that uh, that play this year. Um, but yeah, I mean, more or less, I'm not gonna sit here and update everyone on the standings every single day. I just wanted to point out that they were a half game out. If the Angels lose today and the Red Sox win, guess what? After all the bullshit that we had to deal with um, to, to start the year, as it stands today, the Red Sox are in a playoff spot. They are. Sorry. I'm sorry if that upsets you, but it's just a fact. Like We're, just, we're talking about facts here. People saying it was embarrassing or that it was cringe to point it out. Get the fuck off your high horse. It's June 5th. It's June 5th. It's June 5th. And, and that's it just it's so delusional. And it would be there are some Yankee fans that do have self-awareness and they were doing it jokingly being like, oh, don't stop talking about the past because like that's what Yankee fans are known for doing. There were some Yankee fans that legitimately were wild card shaming. If it weren't for the wild card, the Yankees would have a division title in 2019. And then I think it was what, like 2012 was maybe the last time they won the division? Like, what are you, t- and you haven't even won a championship. Like, what are you, what, what fucking high horse did you ride in on where you've won anything to be able to talk to Red Sox fans about winning, being there, and doing that? Because that's all the Red Sox have done since 2004 is they've been there and they've done that. Winning championships. Like last year was the first time that they had to play in a wild card game. Because they would just fucking win the division and they would go in the playoffs and win a fucking World Series. What are we talking about? How far do you have to look back at moments where the Red Sox, whether they didn't get off to the start they wanted to, whether it came together during the summer or, you know, May and June, like we've seen, or even later, if we're going to go back to 04, how many times do you need to learn this lesson? It's not done. No one's saying anything that they are, you know, don't say it. We're we're not saying that. We're not going to go that far, but. We have been consistent all the way through that it was too early to rule this team out, that it was too early to say, hey, the Red Sox are done. This team is just not going to go anywhere this year. It's a sunk cost. We've been consistent. That's all we're doing here. Mm -hmm. And it's June 5th. The Red Sox hold the playoff spot at the moment. They are playing their best baseball of the year. I think you're coming off a series where you saw your most complete baseball from the bullpen to the rotation to the lineup. If someone told you, considering what the Red Sox were going to need and Chris Sale coming back in these different pieces, if you were at 500 on June 5th, you'd say, okay, they treaded water. Here we are. It's been a little more up and down than I think many of us expected, but they found the middle here. And now, like you said, it's about where you take it. Uh, so the, the whole thing here 
is that I could understand if we were being obnoxious, which we're not, even when the Red Sox started winning series and then they get to 500 and then they move above 500 and then they're in a playoff spot. We've just been sitting here not saying it. So all this boils down to, and this is, this is psychology 101, boys. I know that uh, both of you are still young lads and I can bestow my uh, veteran knowledge upon you. All this is, Yankee fans are like, oh, fuck. Because they're insecure. They haven't won a championship since 2009. You have to understand that most of these kids on Twitter don't even remember 2009. They, have, they don't know how to win. They've they never experienced winning. Is. They have not been there. They have not done that. So when they see the Red Sox get off to this terrible start, they're like, ah, thank God. The Yankees have the best record in baseball. The Red Sox aren't going to even be a factor. So they're making their fucking World Series plans already. And then when they see the Red Sox start, a win a series here, win a series there, sweep the A's, back to 500 in a wild card spot. They still have two thirds of the season to go. Anything can happen. That's when the wheels start spinning in their stupid little brains where they're thinking to themselves, oh, fuck, because you can make the case that and I had this conversation with someone on Twitter today. They were like, oh, you know, what happened? What happened when the Red Sox uh, played the Yankees earlier this year? They beat their ass. And I was like, what happened when the Red Sox played the Yankees in the last series of the season last year? The Yankees beat the Red Sox ass. And then what happened after that? So I don't really, as, as long like, this is my full mindset and it's going to be the mindset for the rest of the year. I don't give a fuck how the Red Sox get into the playoffs. Just get there and we'll see what happens. That's it. Like at no point am I ever going to try and make the case that the Red Sox are better than or more talented than the New York Yankees in 2022. I'm never going to say that. That's uh, add that to the list of things that I'm not going to say. But if they can get there, I mean anything can. We we've seen it before. I'm not just not just with the Red Sox. Like it, baseball, anything can happen. So all I'm saying is that I'll take any entrance into October that I can get. And judging by the feedback on Twitter of just me acknowledging that the Red Sox were a half game back of a playoff spot, you can smell the fear in that fan base. Because if we're talking about young people being on Twitter, what are they fucking like one in eight against the Red Sox against the playoffs since uh, game four of the 2004 ALCS? Like you have full grown like college student Yankee fans who only know the Yankees to be losers against the Red Sox in the playoffs. So all this, you know, Yankee Stadium mystique and the history and the ghosts, who gives a flying fuck? Like, that is so far gone at this point. And, 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 and let me just reiterate, I'm not promising a Red Sox series victory over the Yankees if they happen to meet up in October. I'm not doing that. All I'm saying is that I can smell the fear from that fan base that they talked all that shit about having the best record in baseball in the month of May and the first week of June. Well, knock, knock, motherfucker. Guess who just joined the party? It's the Red Sox, and we came to the back door. You went in the front door? That's great. We came in through the fucking back, and we're here to party. Seriously, it's a team that got kicked in the dick. How many, like, how many teams got kicked in the dick like the Red Sox? For a month, you know, a little over a month. Yeah, lately, lately, yes. right? And we'll, well see. they're back. The uh, Phillies are back. I'm happy you can say that about the Phillies. You definitely mm-hmm. don't say it about the Red Sox. No. Um, but yeah, they move off Joe Girardi. We see fortunes change for them. But for a Red Sox team that started the year like they did, where they got kicked in the dick again and again and again, that's the kind of team you should be scared of. Because this is a team that has come together. You see Xander Bogarts. Never panicked, never wavered. Alex Cora, never wavered. These guys were walking back, blown save after blown save. Anything that could have gone wrong, went wrong. A lot of the plans for the front office didn't work out to start the year. Whether it was just Bobby at first, whether it was the bullpen, and before you knew who John Schreiber was or Tyler Danish was and all these different names, Franchi Cordero coming in and hitting that goddamn missile today. They were sitting there and there wasn't much life. and. They rose. 
that, you know, I'm not going to say anything as, you know, we've said, but for something not to die after being beat almost to the brink of death, those are the guys you should be scared of because mm. you get them in the playoffs. Watch out. There's a dog. This team, there's a dog in the Red Sox, mm. just like, and I'll give credit to the Yankees. There was a dog in them down the stretch last year and the Red Sox ran right into it before that wild card game. And it was scary. And the reason why these Yankee fans are chirping is because they know how quickly momentum can flip. They know how hard it can be, especially that second half of the year when you have Chris Sale coming, when you have that stud rotation down in AAA right now. It takes mm-hmm. one or two of those guys, just one or two of them to get in that bullpen to give you a little something extra. You know, Josh Taylor's throwing bullpens now. Mm-hmm. The season, it, it's just starting. It's just starting. Today's day one. <clears throat> That's season it. season starts today. Actually, you know what? Let me, let me grab it right now. Please. Thank you, Jared. But that's it. If you don't look at it that way, I don't know what to tell you. And whether it's John Heyman who wants to sob or do whatever he does saying, oh, you know, his tweet from the beginning of May where he, oh, I'm happy. I don't know why I picked the Red Sox for the playoffs. Clown. Stop being a clown. Once again, stop hitting the panic button. Stop hitting it too early. Jared, please present this to us. Uh, so if you're watching, this is only for the, the YouTube viewers. If you're watching us on, on YouTube right now on the Carabas Pod DraftKings uh, YouTube channel, this is a Kevin Pulecki game used bat right here. You know what it says? You read that? Oh, would you like me to read it, Jared? Please. Jared, stay hot. Season starts today. Kevin Pulecki. Season starts today. That's it. Season starts today, folks. Listen. Listen, it's been a tough start. It's been a tough start to the season. Uh, but faith will be rewarded. Um, uh, hell hath no fury like a team that uh, has been cast aside and doubted when they're talented enough um, to play October baseball. And I'll be damned if this team isn't uh, destined to play in October in 2022. And Listen, I'll point to the fucking blown saves a million goddamn times. What would the Red Sox record be if they just had a legit closer? I mean, eight games over 500? You're definitely not holding the third wild card right now. No. Um, so, yeah, if you can pinpoint that one issue, the, the 12 blown saves, say they save eight of those games, right? Uh, where would the Red Sox be? Well, I'll tell you right now. Let's just say hypothetically, they save eight out of the 12. Uh, the Red Sox would be um, Yeah, they'd probably still be in the exact same spot, but that's OK. Hey, because the Tampa Bay Rays are 31 and 23. Damn, good for them. But if you look at the run differential, which is interesting, as we always do here, the Red Sox are plus 38. The Rays, plus 11. The Jays? Plus 10. So you still have two thirds of the season to play. What would that run differential, you know, kind of just illustrate to you, Tyler? It it would tell you the Red Sox are a team where you shouldn't look at their record and just take that as what they are. They Mm -hmm. are a much better team than they are. And whatever excuses, whatever you want to say, listen, the people who watch the games can tell you how close that first month of games was. Mm -hmm. The Mm -hmm. eye test isn't the only answer here, though. You got numbers, you got a run differential. Mm-hmm. What more do you need? You know what I need? I need the DraftKings Sportsbook. That's what I need. Tell me about it. You can slide into stacks of cash this baseball season with the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. New customers can bet just $5 on any team to win and get $150 in free bets no matter what, win or lose. If you are looking to turn a small bet into a big payday during MLB season with, uh, with DraftKings, you can do that with same game parlays. Create your own parlay by combining multiple bets like which team will win, how many bases will be stolen, total runs, and more. It's your shot at an even bigger payout. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. All you have to do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use the promo code Jared, J-A-R-E-D. Bet just $5 and get $150 in free bets no matter what happens on the field. That is promo code Jared at DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See the show notes for details. MLB trademarks used with permission. Um, So, 
interestingly enough, uh, I I I don't th- I think Pat picked two out of three, but Pete predicted the sweep. Uh, he's not here to take a bow. Uh, NHL playoffs roll on. They're almost done, right? Playoffs, Jake. They're in the conference finals, so one round after this. Probably like another like week or so. Probably yeah. Then we get pumpkins through the playoffs. Love that. Um, <sighs> well, the Boston Red Sox did, as Pete predicted. Um, uh, you know, I hate to interrupt. Did you here. also predict the sweep? Uh, listen, I'm not just doing this for myself. I'm also doing this for Jake. Jake, I mean, Jake nailed the sweep. I mean, I knew Jake was going to nail the sweep. So I, I, I'm just, I want you also hand. predicted a sweep. I, I believe I did. That's a handout. That's on me. But it's I okay. Be better. Yeah, you do. But I I'll let it be slide this time. Thank you for acknowledging it. Perfect. There's three sweeps. Me and Pat were wrong. Pat's drunk right now. Usually I just say that as a guest. I know he's drunk right now. I FaceTimed him earlier and he was drinking. So that was like. Three hours ago, he's definitely drunk. That explains um, those awful messages in the group chat. Yeah, he's hammered. Um, but the Red Sox did sweep. And, you know, 7-2 to two on Friday, 8 nothing on Saturday, and then a nice little 5-2 victory to cap it off. Uh, I kind of, you know, I feel like the Red Sox, when they've won, the offense has been the highlight of the story. I think that there was there was a series where we did like a series recap where Nate, I think it was like that Saturday against Baltimore where he threw the complete game. I don't even think we fucking said anything about no, it. I saw a couple people actually tweet that at us and I, yeah, I, I like, do want to apologize. Just, yeah. I mean, sorry, Nate. But Nate goes six shut on Friday, eight strikeouts, and that's coming off what? A career high 11 strikeouts? Correct. So Nate goes six after the CG, one walk, eight strikeouts. And then I got to blow Nick Pavetta for a quick second. Because, again, if you listen to Baseball is Dead, you'll hear fucking Dallas gush about this Blackburn character. And listen, he's having a good year. He's got a sub three. It was like, it was almost, it was like, it was in the low twos coming into that start. Um, But seven hits, four earned against the Red Sox, a couple walks there, only three strikeouts. And then you on the other side, Nick Pavetta, seven two-hit shutout innings. And I, and I, I dug into the numbers this morning. That's usually what I do. I, it's kind of like a morning routine. I wake up and I'm like, who can, I, who can I do a little digging on today? Who can I just like whip up some numbers on and, and show some love to him? And this morning... It was Nick Pavetta coming off that uh, seven shutout, two hit performance uh, against the Oakland A's. So this is this is Nick Pavetta's first five starts, a 7.84 ERA, opponents hitting 3.05 with an 8.44 OPS. The Red Sox lost all five of those starts. Um, and then I had to word it in a certain way for characters. It says Nick Pavetta's last six starts. It's, it's really the next six. He's made 11 starts. So this was the first five and then the last, five, uh, the last six. So over his last six starts, a 132 ERA, opponents hitting 153 with a 473 OPS. The Red Sox are 5-1 and one in those six games. He has the sixth best ERA in the majors over that span and the third best whip. And someone in the comments had the audacity to point out Nick Pavetta's run support, the average total run support he's gotten over that span. And I'm like, bitch, when you got a 132 ERA and an 073 whip, I'm pretty sure the fucking run support doesn't matter because he's been one of the best pitchers in baseball over that six start span. And yes, I acknowledge it's easier to pitch when you have a lead. It is. But. See, what I hate about that is, listen, you can claim luck or whatever it may be. It's a 246 FIP since the beginning of May. Yeah. Like, this is a guy who's refined his control and his command. And, you know, I think people were a little nervous early in the year. And even now, the velocity isn't as high as it was. But it seemed like Alex Cora kind of hinted at it. He's been willing to take a little bit off of the fastball to get a little bit more command there. And I think that's what you're seeing. The fastball still plays. He was blowing that thing by guys, you know, sitting 93, 94 uh, because of his extension. And he's figured out his mechanics again. You see what happens when all these line up and 
I think we look back that first start of spring training, he looked amazing. And then after that, all the way through April, things were off. It was that constant mention of where the mechanics are at. Hey, they, he figured him out. Whatever it was that he had to kind of work through and Cora ended up leaving in, leaving him in against Toronto. And a lot of people at the time were a little upset about that, but it worked. And now you're seeing a guy in Nick Pavetta, which credit to the Red Sox, credit to Heim Bloom. They said, hey, when we let Erod walk this year, we need someone to turn into a number three. We need someone to become a mid-rotation starter for us. Well, Nick Pavetta said, hey, April was rough, but guess what? I'm showing up in May. He just showed up in June as well. Like, what more can you ask out of a guy like that? And it just goes back. Getting him has been a heist. We've known dating back to last year. But for him to take this next step forward, to drop that curveball like he is doing consistently, I think that's been one of the biggest things for this whole Red Sox turnaround. <clears throat> this is totally uh, this is totally unrelated. I did want to point this out, though, as like a side note. And this is not including... Well, he didn't play. Yeah, okay. So this is not including today. Um, because we were talking about fleeces. Michael Chavis. Again, not including Sunday. Since May 9th, he's hitting 345 with a 400 on base and a 952 OPS. He's been swinging it. He's been doing good. Yeah. He's been it, doing pretty good. And if you look back at last year post deadline, he swung it pretty good once he got there. They are putting him in a lot of positions and like mostly platooning. So I think they found the right role for him. And do I think he would have found it here? Probably not. It just looked like two sides that, yeah. you know, their time had kind of come and gone. But I also don't want to crap on Austin Davis either. He's turned yeah, he's into a, a good year. Solid middle reliever for you. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy that, that Austin Davis is here. He's done really well, uh, especially this season. Big fudge. Um, but I think when you talk about a first base situation, it's just, you know, kind of stands out. But he's been playing some first, some third, some second, some DH. Um, yeah, he's been all over the place. But just want to point that out. I do want to point out as well, though, if Michael Chavis was still around, we may not get to see the greatness of Frenchie Cordero. Also very true. And I did have a take. I didn't want to tweet it out. I didn't want to tweet it out because I'm. I didn't want it to come off as a shot against Alex Verdugo because it's not. But I did want to say I wouldn't hate seeing Franchi in that fifth spot. I don't hate it. It it's tough. I I think with Verdugo too, it's one of those things where he's finally got it going. You know, mm -hmm. the last five or six games he's hitting above three hundred again. Um, you know, had a really good day in the second game of the series, going three for five with a couple of ribbies. If he kind of slumps back into what he was, I think it's very fair. But I I don't think anybody could tell you. Franchi Cordero is taking some of the best at bats on the entire team right now. He is. Just he's so patient up there. And, you know, I never thought he would have turned into that guy. We looked a year ago. But what did he not do in this series? Like yeah. between every single game he had an RBI, I'm pretty sure he had the most RBIs of any Red Sox player in this series was six. Mm -hmm. uh, flashed the leather at first base the other day. Kind of picking it up a little bit after that, uh, you know, rough game against Cincinnati. A couple nice plays in the outfield, too. Verdugo had a knock on Friday and today, Sunday, and he had a three hit game on Saturday. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's, it's, not, it's not an indictment on Verdugo as much as it is rewarding uh, Franchi for how good he's been. And he got robbed in the first inning today. You know, th that should have been two runs at the least down the right field line. Yeah. Uh, props to the A's. They make a nice play and they steal it. Then Franchi just, he doesn't give a damn. He comes back and he hits that tank shot. Uh, it's just, you look at between him and Bob and you're getting the defense of Bob. It gives you more options. The team's more versatile. You know, I think anybody who's still doubting, Fred or doubting Franchi Cordero at this point, he's not going anywhere. Uh, he he's going to be sticking around here for a bit. And... He can give you a little bit of everything, right? Good defense and right field, good, or, you know, fine, you know, a little below average defense at first base, but an above average bat. Mm -hmm. That will take you pretty damn far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now because we're going to eventually get to the, uh, we're going to get to the Clark's catch up MVP. And it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting when you look at the numbers because I know. That there was a favorite coming in. There was a favorite coming in. I just looked at the numbers. 
There is someone who has identical numbers in this series for the favorite. And I didn't I didn't put two and two together, but it's true. Hmm. Yeah. Should we go there? Do you want guesses? Yeah, do you it, All right, so the the favorite for the Clark's Ketchup MVP, Rafael Devers. Rafael Devers in this series hit 333 with a thir- a 385 on base, a 667 slug had a 10.51 OPS in this series. This other player hit 333 with a 385 on base, a 667 slug and a 10.51 OPS. The exact same on base, batting average slug OPS, it's all the same. And if you look at this, Rafael Devers, 23.1% K rate. This other guy, 7.7% K rate. So it's the homer percentage, 7.7%. Weighted on base average, both of them, 438. Hmm. And it's a (sighs) name we are yet to mention so far on this podcast. I don't think we've mentioned this name. Hmm. I mean, by by a hair, this unnamed person had a better series than Rafael Devers. This is like actually driving me crazy. Yeah. Let's look at the counting numbers. Okay. Can't be Bogarts. It is Bogarts. It is Bogarts after yeah. going 0 for 4 today? Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, obviously going deep in that first game and props to him for the history he made as well. He deserves it. Wow. Yeah. Props to Xander Bogarts. Bogarts had four hits in the series. Devers Two. had four hits in the series. Yep. Two singles, two singles, one double, one double, no triples, and they each had a homer. Bogart scored four runs. Devers scored three. Uh, Devers drove in five, though. Bogart's drove in three. Um, Bogart's only struck out once in the series. Devers struck out three times. Um, yep. Wow. T- total bases, eight to eight. So I don't know. I guess I, I guess it's what you value more because now we're down to we've never had this before. I don't think for the Clark's catch of MVP. This is this is quite the race. So do you value if everything else is a wash? Literally, they had the exact same series outside of uh, Devers struck out more, but he drove in more runs and he did it in every single game. Yeah. Yeah, and- that's a good point. But I think Spread Bogarts made history, like he made all time Red Sox history during mm-hmm. this series. You know, he did most starts at shortstop. That I got to give him some points for that. That means mm-hmm. something to me as well. Mm-hmm. Wow, this 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 might be the tightest Clark's catchup MVP race of all time. <laughs> and and I'm not saying Franchi should win it over one of these guys, but when he had the most RBIs of any player in the series, you know, he's at least that guy on the outside. We have a lot of names here. Jake, what do you what do you think about this? Don't give me your vote, but just where do you where do you kind of like what's your first reaction when when we go over these numbers and we see how fucking close it is? Rafi was obviously the favorite. I was looking at the numbers too and was thinking Bogarts. Um, I don't know if we have an official list of what can be factored into the decision of Clark's schedule MVP, but I do think the most starts at shortstop in Red Sox history should be a factor. I agree. And so that that that's just what I'm thinking. Mm. Like, I'm not totally opposed to do like when you're doing exactly the same thing. Like, can you do a co Clark's catch up MVP? Uh, Devers also fought out core today. Said, hey, I don't yeah, want a DH. A, that's a good point. He said, listen, listen, Alex, I'm playing third base. Today. I don't give a fuck. I, yeah. I want to be in the field. That's a fucking great point. They said it on the broadcast. Rafael Devers was supposed to DH today. Julio was not in the lineup. Um, and then you had Rafael Devers saying, fuck you, I'm playing third base. That has a lot of value too. Fuck. That makes it even tighter. Like, I don't know. I don't know what. I, I'm flabbergasted. 
I'm flabbergasted about this. Like, I almost want to call Coley and be like, what's the ruling here? I think that's the only kind of like expertise we need here. But realistically, you know, I want to put myself in the shoes of Xander endeavors here. Would they want either one of them to win it or would they want both of them to win it? Yeah, I mean, man, they wouldn't want to take it from one, you know, it, put it this way. If 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 the people at Barstool can call me and use me for a phone a friend on the dozen, why can't we call Coley for this? I think that's the only thing that seems fair. You you look. You look in between, Jared. What what is making you say no to this? I'm not afraid. I'm gonna fucking FaceTime him right now. Don't be a pussy. <laughs> See if he answers. Please. What's up, buddy? You watching a little ball? Yeah. <laughs> uh so we're recording uh we're recording that pod, the Red Sox one. And uh, so we're doing the Clark's Ketchup MVP right now. And my thought, pro- well, I'm going to lay out this part first. I was like, if, if they can call me for a phone a friend on the dozen, why can't I call Coley for this? Uh, so Xander Bogarts and Rafael Devers had the exact same numbers. Like, let me read them to you. Uh, they bo- they had the same batting average, the same slugging percentage, the same on base. So obviously that they had the same OPS. They both had four hits. They both had uh, two singles. They both had a double. They both had a homer. Xander scored four runs. Devers scored three runs. Xander drove in three. Devers drove in five. They had the exact same amount of total bases. Uh, and then we're factoring in that Xander like broke the record for most games as a Red Sox shortstop, but also that Rafael Devers forced his way. Like he was supposed to be DH today. And then he was like, fuck you, I'm playing third base. So like it's it's the tightest Clark's catch-up MVP race of all time. Um, I don't know what to do. A, a tie goes to the runner type situation. So I, I feel like the, the tie goes to Franchi. <laughs> oh, I like the way Coley's thinking. You, so you would vote for Franchi? He's, oh, we pulled the, this was the stat before he hit <laughs> that home run that won them the game, mind you. That's true. It's a good point, uh, Coley. The, the stat. Our pal Stats tweeted out. Mm-hmm. Again, Not my was, pal. This was after he, he laced that 101 mile per hour out with an 840 ex, uh, expected batting average. Right. Uh, with, the, with the bases juiced, mind you. So he got robbed of a couple of a couple apples there. Uh, his hard hit rate is 17th in the league. That was before he hit that first pitch on Frankie Montas, uh, 700 feet to opposite field. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's playing like a top. 15 power hitter in all of baseball Mm -hmm. uh and i feel like that alone deserves some sort of recognition i think people are going to be stunned if franchi wins the clark sketch of mvp listen he was i I don't what what's not getting factored in for you guys and i know you're not factoring it in because i'm not on the show uh franchi has reinvented how to field fly balls by doing a full 360 spin before catching every single one of them it gives me a heart attack every time but that kind of flair and pizzazz you just don't see that in modern baseball anywhere else right right no that's a good point uh but yeah i would be if if we can only pick between the other two i i feel like you know who i'm going to pick i don't know who i know you love both guys of course i love both guys but i think I think if you factor in another stat, who had the most uh, stories shared to Instagram of their record-breaking graphic by their teammates, it was Xander in a wash. Mm. Every player on the team posted that graphic, the Red Sox. It was kind of like, uh, hey, if you don't fucking re-sign this guy, we're all going to be furious. <laughs> the fa- and Core, Core talking about who deserves the C on their chest and naming Xander the unofficial official captain. I feel like it, it has to be. It was Xander's weekend. 
So you would vote you would vote for Xander. If I if I could do a win plays show, my win is uh Franchi Cordero. Mm-hmm. Uh plays is Xander Bogart's show is Rafael Devers. Wow. Wow. This this like this muddies the waters more than anything I could have imagined. Well, that's why you called me to make things much more difficult. Mm-hmm. For everybody. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, do you have anything else you want to say? Or? Uh, not at the moment, though. No. Okay. All right. Um, I'll be in touch and uh, go Celtics. You better believe it, friend. All right. <laughs> what happened? The turnover. Ah, damn. What's the score? It's 16-11. And boy, oh, boy, are those all 11 points by Golden State scored by the referees. Oh, geez. I, I'm not even joking. Like, they've stopped the game three times to yell at the Celtics, even though the Warriors are the ones doing everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, hey, we we appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you guys more. All right. I'll uh, talk to you soon. See you. Bye-bye. Right, there you go. Who do we call now? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to be bold. Okay. I'm going to give it to Devers. Oh, boy. I'm here. I'm going to stand tall. I, I, As much as I appreciate Xander and the history he made, and he should get every ounce of credit and all those words from Alex Cora should be heard, I think Franchi, as I will continue to say, deserves real consideration in this conversation. And I'm happy a great mind, a great baseball mind like Coley can recognize that. But Devers... All three games. Huge hits. I got to give him credit for that. Made a insanely nice grab. And I think, listen, you go to game two and how it started. That grab he made for the first out of the game. That game could have started differently for Nick Pavetta. Yep. Who, who knows what happens after that? The butterfly effect, as some call it. Yeah. I'm going to step up. I'm going uh, to be strong and I'm going to give it to Devers. <sighs> Jake? I think Coley swayed me. I think I got Sander. Man, so now it comes down to me, huh? All right. Can you rule out Franchi, Jared? I mean, if I picked Franchi, that would be fucking chaos. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Please. <laughs> um, wow. I feel like I'm putting a lot of stock in what Coley said. Because coming in, I thought... Here we go. It's a slam dunk for Devers. We don't even have to talk about this. I was not anticipating having the most uh, heated Clark's catch-up MVP debate of all time. Definitely didn't see that one coming. Taking over the podcast. It really is. Um, Fuck. I mean... (sighs) What's your heart saying? My heart's saying Devers because uh, he did it he 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 did it spread out. He drove in more runs. I don't care so much about the strikeouts. Like I weigh the runs driven in more than I weigh the strikeout percentage and the consistency. Because Xander I, Xander was over today. Yes, but can I throw in a variable here? Sure. Bogarts mm-hmm. broke instant replay today. That's true. That's true. How many guys can say that? Probably more than they should be able to. Right. But he did do that today. He did. I think. uh, I mean, key part in that game. Key part. It was a key part. And and I do understand and I get I get Coley trying to weigh the. um, The uh, Xander breaking the record thing. But did that like did that fire up the boys? Maybe it fired up the boys. I don't I don't know. Like win it for Xander. I, I don't know. I mean, fuck, I think I, but- uh, I think that night, at least from Bogart's standpoint, there was a feeling amongst them. And you could see it, you know, the homer and everything and how it played out. Um, but the whole series, I think it's a different question. Hmm. I think I I, I mean, I, I love the fact that. Devers was like, fuck, fuck it. I'm playing third base today. So ultimately, I think that's why I have to vote for Rafael Devers. The consistency, the runs driven in, 
and and that move saying I'm I'm playing third base. And for that reason, Rafael Devers is your Clark's catch-up MVP. Scoops. It's incredible. What a battle. What a battle that was. Even Franchi getting some love. There's no loser in this conversation. No, not at all. You're only a loser if you don't use Seeky. Is that true? 100%. If you're out in Anaheim, you get the Red Sox coming to town for four games. You've got to download the SeatGeek app. Did you know that your butt has a favorite app, Tyler? No, but I'd love to hear about it. It's SeatGeek. Yep, it sure is. I think uh, <clears throat> probably going to be using SeatGeek when the Red Sox come back. Actually, when the green and gold comes to town, I don't think I'm going to be able to miss one of those games next week. Did uh? Uh, did you in Dallas work out a day off for him for the live stream? Uh, I don't think he's going to do it. I don't think he's going to be able to make it, which is unfortunate. It would have been great content. But I mean, he, you know, he's, he's a 162 guy. I can't, I can't get in the way of that. If he was like a, a 140 game guy and he didn't do it, then I'd be like, what the fuck? Like, you can definitely like move some shit around. But if he's going for the 162, Godspeed. I respect that. And he's going to have to clean your apartment anyways, so. Correct. Yeah. We should sell tickets to that, put it on SeatGeek. Just um, live stream it. We could do that as well. We could definitely do that as well. And SeatGeek is so beloved by butts everywhere that they've made it the highest rated ticketing app. Whether it's concerts, baseball, basketball, football, festivals, or anything else, SeatGeek puts, you for, uh, puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. SeatGeek rates every ticket from zero to 10 to make sure you're getting a good deal. Green means good and red means bad. You can get $20 off your first purchase using the promo code Jared at SeatGeek.com or on the SeatGeek app. That is promo code Jared for $20 off your first SeatGeek order. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat and download the app today. Um, wow. I'm still sweating from that fucking Clark SketchUp MVP discussion. My yeah. fucking pits are damp right now. I need to change my shirt. Yeah. And my pants. Yeah, this is... Uh, uh, people are going to be talking about this one for a long time. Speaking of changing uh, my pants, can I mm-hmm. can I give a shout out to Rich Hill today? Please do, yeah. 42-year-old Rich, Rich, Rich Hill went pitch for pitch. Oh, dude, Frankie Montas, one of the better young pitchers in all of baseball. Coming off a rough start. And I feel like when Rich Hill has a rough start, I think he gets it harder than any other starter the Red Sox have. And I think part of it's his age. Obviously, it's the way he pitches. You know, it's a grind. We get what it is. But man, for him to come out and have that kind of a or that kind of start today to give the bullpen, which obviously needed some help there. It got rocky. He came and did the damn job again. Like for your fifth starter, I think Rich Hill consistently shows up. And this was supposed to be a Band-Aid for a couple months. They're going to have to push him a little farther, obviously, waiting for Chris Sale. But can you really ask much more out of Rich Hill? Mm. Mm. Didn't walk a guy today. Did not walk a guy. Retired 16 in a row at one point. Uh, this is an important tweet from Lou Merloni. Because the Red Sox went 1-2 and two versus the Angels earlier in the year, it's extremely important to take 3-4 of four and finish the season 4-3 and three against them because there's no game 163. The tiebreaker is season head-to-head record. Same with all the other teams that may be in the mix. It's an interesting note. Are you concerned with, uh, and you know, maybe I'm too, I get too caught up in momentum, but with how bad things are for the Angels right now, mm-hmm. that team's too talented. We all know the, the switch will flip at some point. Mm-hmm. Are you concerned it happens the next four games? I'm not, I'm not concerned that it happens in the next four games, but. I mean, exactly what I said in the state of the nation is like there may be some fans that are like licking their chops being like, all right, great. We get to play a team that just lost 11 straight games. They're not 11. They're not 15 loss in a row bad. They're not 11 loss in in a row bad. Um, So I know the Red Sox are not going to underestimate their opponent here. 
but I'm not exactly like, ah, yes, like, here we go. Like, we're playing a team that just fucking never wins. Like, I, I'm not, like, feeling that way. Uh, but that being said, I still think the Red Sox can go in and do some damage here. They are kind of, you know, like, if a team's not playing well, they're not playing well. And then you kind of get in your own head, uh, especially after the loss that they just suffered on Sunday, where... Bryce Harper hits a grand slam in the eighth inning to tie it against their closer, by the way. They had their closer. That's how fucking desperate they were to win the game. They had their closer in the game in the eighth inning against Bryce Harper, who hit a grand slam to tie it. The Angels uh, in the top half took the lead, and then they give up a walk-off homer. So... Like they they they're going through to an even worse extent what April was for us, uh, and what the what like you know the past five weeks were for the Phillies. Um, they're in fucking dick kick city right now, and guess who wants to kick some dicks? The Red Sox. Now is the time to fucking super kick some cock, and this is the team to do it against. Uh, yeah, and they they just can't. They can't uh, let him off the hook. They can't be like, hey, we're going to be the team that fucking you turn your shit around against. I feel like this is where you get to separate yourself. Like, mm-hmm. this is your opportunity. And, you know, is this the one opportunity you'll have? No. But if you go in here and you do take three out of four, you give yourself a couple games of breathing room between, you know, the Angels and the Guardians that have hung around over there, the Rangers that aren't super far off. Like, Give yourself a little bit of that room. Establish yourself into this playoff race. It's kind of similar to the, like, you're over 500 today. We're all feeling good. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but you drop the first game of the series. You slip back under. It's like, all right, you know, you're still waiting for that moment. Like, let's get over and stay over. I think that kind of needs to be the thought process for the series. Really getting three out of four would go a long way in terms of that playoff race, in terms of getting over 500. You just need another gear. And I, I think you said that earlier in the podcast, and I think that's the big thing. You beat up on the A's, and you really did it with all parts of your team shining. Will it be that way all season? Hell no. But now go and show it against a team like you did the White Sox a few weeks back when you guys were kind of neck and neck and make that statement and show, hey, like we're a tier above. You know, We're, we're not going to be one of these teams barely hanging in there. No, we can actually put some distance between us and make us you know, a respected wildcard team in that sense. Jake, what are you feeling right now? Where are you at on this Red Sox team? Because I know, <clears throat> I know it's been really hard for you to not say it. Uh, I, I saw a tweet before we did the podcast about the ice bath. So that means like you're kind of like on the precipice of saying it and, and you're not in an ice bath right now. So you must be kind of sweating it out. Um, where are you at now that the Red Sox have gotten back to 500 and they're about to play a team for a four game set that has lost 11 straight games? Where are you at? Yeah, I actually just got out of the bath right before we started recording. Cause- got it. <laughs> Jared uh, texted us earlier and said, let's, let's record this right after the game because I want to watch the Celtics. Um, mm-hmm. So I rushed out of the bath to, to get on the pod. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's getting really, really hard not to say it. And I mean, like Tyler said, if, if we can win a couple games against the Angels right now, give ourselves some separation, like it's hard, it's hard, to say, it's hard not to say it right now, but mm-hmm. imagine if we do that, it's going to be almost impossible not to right. say it. And we've Are, got how, how many fucking weeks left? 23 days. <laughs> Do it's, you want seconds and minutes? <laughs> it's three weeks from this upcoming Tuesday, June 28th. <laughs> you guys, I noticed something actually about the 28th that I'm slightly concerned about. What is it? I'm going to be on vacation. Where the fuck are you going? I, I, just down the Cape. But I have a family trip I go on every single year. And, and I, you're, I, you're going to be on vacation during June 28th? Like I, I said, I told people to take it off from work. I didn't say go on vacation. I guess I took it a little too far. My family got overly excited. Jesus um, Christ. But I will find a way. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to have to buy, a router, Wi-Fi. I'm going to have to go to Starbucks. If that's my background for a podcast, that might be my background. I mean, it's a holiday. It's, it's the biggest day. It it just it came. I was just thinking at work. I was putting in my time off, and I was like six twenty eight, mm. and I kind of sat there in shock for a second. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I I told my family just to cancel the vacation, but they're selfish. Right. right. They don't they don't give a fuck about anybody but themselves. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah. So 
slightly comp slightly complicated in this process, but uh another thing to weigh. I mean, I I have no doubt in my mind that uh June you'll make it. Uh, I have to. You'll find a way. I mean, you can do a hot spot on your phone even if it's for like 5 minutes. Like I could be, be on the beach. You could be you could be anywhere. I know that June 28th will come and you'll be there. I promise you guys. Thank you. Of course. Don't hold your applause. You don't have to thank me or hey, clap or anything. Listen. If you if if I turn on my laptop on June 28th and I don't see your face, I'll be stunned. Listen. I don't know if you ever heard this before, but I'm what you call a 162 kind of guy. Mhm. You know, I I you don't throw a term around like that, you know, often, but I put myself in that category. 100%. Jake's a 162 guy too. Big time 162 guy. And Jake is also <clears throat> a Freshly guy. Right, Jake? Love Freshly. Love it. Because he's busy. He's producing the podcast. He's producing the streams. He's cutting up the video for the YouTube. He's, he's editing the audio for the, for the Spotify and iTunes. He doesn't have fucking time to cook dinner. Starving. He doesn't have that kind of time. He's working seven days a week. He's working all hours of the day, all hours of the night. He's, he's in meetings for 16 hours a day. Hopping That's in bathtubs. He's in bath. He's taking ice baths. He's watching every single game. That's dedication. If you're as dedicated as Jake, you don't have time to cook. That's where Freshly comes in. It's food that's fast that doesn't have to be fast food. Freshly offers quality meals without the hard work. Their meals are designed by nutritionists, cooked by chefs, then delivered fresh. Other meal deliveries need to be prepped and cooked, but Freshly is ready to eat in three minutes. And even that might be too long for Jake. Three minutes. No one wants to spend an hour cooking dinner after a rough day at work or an infuriating commute. At the end of a long day, takeout doesn't have to be your only option for an easy dinner. Whether it's for you or your whole family, Freshly gives you convenience, flavor, and nutrition. Um, Jake, what do you, uh, how often are you, uh, you eating freshly? If I didn't have it, I'd literally starve. That's what I'm saying. I eat it for every meal. Right. And you can eat it for every meal because A, it's that good for you and B, it's super convenient and you don't have the fucking time to get food any other way. So you get delicious chef-made, nutrient-packed meals delivered straight to your door, no cooking required, fresh and never frozen, ready to heat and enjoy in just three minutes. Use the Freshly website or app to find meals that fit your lifestyle with plans that work for your dietary needs, preferences, tastes, and family size. Choose from over 50 nutritionist design entrees like their classic steak peppercorn, multi-serve sides like their masterful mac and cheese, or their new line of plant-based meals. Skip the grocery shopping and dirty dishes. Your meals arrive cooked and fresh every week. New meals are added weekly, so you're never stuck eating the same thing over and over. Stop stressing about dinner. Right now, Freshly is offering our listeners $125 off your first five orders when you go to Freshly.com slash Boston. That is $125 off at Freshly.com slash Boston. <clears throat> wow. Um, okay. What, uh, what else we got here? Should we look ahead? I think we should look ahead. So we also him. have the fucking uh, Celtics game we got to we got to watch. I love hoops. Yeah. All right. The Stop and Shop Look Ahead. Brought to you by Stop and Shop. Um, yeah. So uh, it's a four-game series. Right now, uh, we're looking at Michael Walker versus Noah Syndergaard in the opener. Um, that's Monday. Garrett Whitlock versus T 
TBD. Did, did the the Angels haven't fucking named a starter for the rest of the series besides the center guard? Is that right? It's true, and they've been operating with that six man rotation as well. Jesus Christ! Uh, all right, yeah, Michael Walker versus Noah Syndergaard. You got Garrett Whitlock in Game Two, <clears throat> Nathan Avaldi in Game Three, and then uh, Nick Pavetta goes in the finale. So I guess we can talk about Noah Syndergaard because that's the only fucking starter we got. Um, we kind of broke this down a little bit on Baseball Is Dead about Noah. He's made eight starts this year. Only two of them have been bad. But it just so happens that those two starts have come in his last three. Uh, He went two-thirds of an inning against the Rangers back on May 16th and gave up six runs. Four of them were earned. Only one strikeout. Uh, But then he followed that up again against the same Texas Rangers, his next start, eight innings, one earned run, five strikeouts. And then his last time out was against the New York Yankees. And he went two and a third, seven hits, five earned with a walk and zero strikeouts. So I don't I guess it's, it's how you really want to look at it with Syndergaard. Um, I, I kind of look at Syndergaard at this point. I think it's a 402 ERA on the year. It's a, it's a 392 FIP. So like, I think there's a little luck both ways, you know, some bad recently, but also a lot of good luck early in the year. But I feel like this is just isn't the same Noah Syndergaard a lot of people remember. You know, the K per nine is down to six this year. And this is a guy who was at nine and a half, nine and a half for his entire career. I, I'm not telling you to look at Noah Syndergaard and say, hey, like, don't worry. This is going to be an easy matchup. But should you sit there and say, whoa, like, you know, we're going to be definitely outmatched by a good amount with Michael Waka on the mound. I wouldn't go that far either. Yeah. Yeah. I, I it's it, again, it's <laughs> it's fucking hard to say. uh <laughs> Like prediction wise or what to expect wise when when the angels are you know not announcing starters, but um I would be prepared for anything as it pertains to noah Syndergaard. for for the most part for the vast majority, he's been good, but his two worst starts of the season have come in his last three starts, so be prepared for anything uh the angels again have lost eleven straight baseball games uh I got a good feeling about this series. I know that the Angels played the Red Sox tough, but they were also they were also one fucking strike away from taking two out of three in that series. Um, you know that there was some there was some late inning heroics in that series. I, I, I'm not going to say I'm not going to expect it this time around. Like anything can happen, whatever. But they're playing their absolute worst baseball of the season, and. Uh, the Red Sox almost took two out of three when they were playing their worst baseball of the season. So that being said, I'm not going to underestimate the opponent. I like three out of four. I'm right there with you. And the big thing is, look at the arms you got in the series. Whitlock, Evaldi, Pavetta, those last three. Waka has been, you know, overperforming without a doubt, but still has pitched really well and is coming off his best start since his injury. How do you not feel about or how do you not feel good about what arms you're going to have out there? And I think that's the biggest thing. We know this lineup's going to hit. That's just what this team is going to do. It's what they're built on. If the bullpen can give them anything, just enough to get through this series. And hey, could there be a blow up in there? Sure. But hey, this Angels team has plenty of blow ups of their own going on right now. I don't see why you can't st- like step in here and just take advantage. And I don't think you have to sweep. You don't have to play a perfect series. You beat up on a bad team like you did in the A's. But I think three out of four is entirely possible. Mm hmm. Jake. I'm not going to underestimate him either, but I got the socks in a sweep. <laughs> <laughs> love how you put that. I love that. Um, <clears throat> it's a great pick. It's a great pick. Uh, all right. So we. Uh, we begin a four game set tomorrow. The Red Sox are back to 500. They've got a great opportunity here because I know that every time you look at a a West Coast swing, you hear like the Jaws music. Like, oh, when's the 10-game West Coast trip? All right, that's fine. But your first seven games of that 10-game, let's just say the whole fucking trip, right? You swept the first three. The Angels have lost 11 straight. 
There's there's your seven. And then the last leg of it is a team that you swept in four games at Fenway. So I know it seems daunting. Next month is is also a whole nother animal because that's uh, predominantly American League East teams and the Red Sox have not performed well against their own division this year. But let's take it one game, one series at a time, one road trip at a time. I, I don't I don't feel doom and gloom about this West Coast trip. I think it's going to suck when <laughs> we have to record the podcast after a fucking West Coast game coming up this week. That's going to suck. What is that, Thursday night? Yep. Yep. 9.38 start. Yeah. I got a I gotta fucking uh, Thursday night fucking 1.30 a.m. podcast start and then like a 9 a.m. haircut Friday morning uh, in Saugus. I'm sure Tyler's wake up is even worse. I, I might. You know, we just might punt on sleeping. Jake's probably got a fucking 7.30 a.m. meeting. So we're going to tough it out. We're going to get to your podcast uh, on Friday after the Angels series. You know why? Because we're 162, guys. That's it. We're 162, guys. Respect us. Please. And uh, no, listen. please. I demand. No. Yeah, we demand. We demand respect <laughs> for being 162, guys. And we appreciate uh, you listening. You're probably 162, guys, or girls, too. If, if you were here in April... You deserve to uh, treat yourself today. Red Sox are back to 500. It only goes up from here. We'll see you on Friday morning. Buenas noches, amigos.